Welcome to Soul Searching, the Soul Recruitment Podcast, where we tackle all sorts of great topics in the areas of recruitment, job searching, mindset, technology, marketing, culture, and lots more. It's amazing what you'll pick up. Thanks for joining me. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Darren Saul here, your host of Saul Searching, the Saul Recruitment Podcast. Another fantastic episode. It's episode 51. I hope you're doing well. I've got a fantastic show and a fantastic guest. Cam Elliott is back by popular demand. He's been with us a little while ago, but he's got some amazing developments in his career that he'd like to share. And so we've asked him back on the show. How are you doing, Cam? I'm good. And when you say popular demand, has my mum been hassling you again? <laughs> She's <laughs> rung me every day for the last week. So I just had to succumb. <laughs> Thanks for having me back on, Darren. Always I love, love talking to you, mate. Uh, you're a legend. Um, but everybody out there, we're going to be chatting about why he moved from corporate training to online learning. So Cam is a learning and development professional dedicated to helping people and organizations create high-performing teams. His career has seen him work with leaders to help them empower their teams to succeed, running team workshops designed to improve communication and collaboration, leading to better outcomes for individuals and their organizations. Cam's career saw him working for iconic brands such as Channel 7 and ACP magazines. He was sales director at Reed Business, managing over 50 sales reps and sales managers throughout Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. In 2013, Cam left his corporate role to pursue his passion for people development and founded Elevate Corporate Training, a boutique firm that specializes in leadership training, team development, sales training, and recruitment training. He sold the business in 2022 and still advises to Elevate. Now, Cam is the country director for Good Habits Australia. Good Habits is one of Europe's fastest growing online learning companies, and Cam is responsible for launching and growing the Good Habits brand in Australia. Good Habits aims to make learning accessible to everyone and intrinsically motivating through outstanding content and customer support. When he's not dedicating himself to helping people grow, Cam can be found spending time with his family in Kourabel, just outside of Byron Bay. He's a keen surfer, fisherman, and a tennis fanatic. Well, Cam, just reading that makes me think, my Lord, what have I done? (laughs) It makes me feel exhausted. <laughs> oh my God, you've been very, very busy. Uh, that's the abbreviated version. That's I right. left it. I had to cut that down. That stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that's an outstanding achievement, and you know, well done on the sale of, of Elevate, obviously. Thanks. Yeah, it was a, a huge, huge step for me. So not something I was necessarily looking for, and yeah. the universe kind of conspired, and um, uh, it's been a, it's a great outcome. Um, and uh, yes, I'm I'm really happy, and uh, it's been a, been a great transition. Ah, oh, mate. Well, I mean, let's chat a bit about that. Tell us a bit about you know how that all happened and why you decided to sell such a great training business and move into what you're doing at the moment. Uh Oh gosh, it's such a <laughs> I don't know where to start to tell you the truth. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna go back a little way here. Yeah. So um in 2017, 16, 17, I was uh I had the Elevate business. I'd been operating it for a couple of years already. Um, I was actually living with my family in Bali at the time. I think I told you about that when I was last on, um, we lived there for four years. So I was probably about halfway through that four years. And, uh, one of my, my youngest daughter, uh, her best friend, um, I was having a, uh, a beer with her dad and they had been in Bali for about four years as well. And he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, you know, I've, I know you're kind of big and you're in the learning space. I know that you've got some sales experience, that sort of thing. He said, oh, we're just about to leave Bali. I'm moving back to the Netherlands and I'm going to take on this role as chief commercial officer for this company called Good Habits. Um, oh, my God. Heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he said, so I tell you, when we, when we launch in Asia, I'll um I'll give you a call and uh, see if there's uh, see if you'd be interested in working for us. And I, I his name's Eric. And I said, Eric, please don't do that. 
sounds like a terrible <laughs> idea. So I, I don't have my jobs anymore. <laughs> um, and I left it at that. And then, uh, you know, I went on, I, I, you know, Elevate became a success. We, uh, we, we ended up moving back to Australia in 2019 uh we can i continued to grow elevate we you know maneuvered it through uh covid which was very challenging and then um came out all the stronger for it um and then uh eric uh the cco called me again in january of 2022 and said hey um you know we're looking at launching not just in asia we're actually specifically launching in australia i say you're back there now would you be interested Wow. And I said, mate, what did I tell you four years ago? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, so anyway, I I uh, I had some more conversations with him. And, and I'm just going to answer this slightly differently now. So I'm going to say there were really two things that, that really drove me to this. One was push and one was pull, okay. you know. And um, I'd run my own business for a long time. I loved Elevate. I was absolutely passionate about it i love doing workshops i love um i had a small team i love working with that team um i had some great clients um but i was traveling like a madman i was i was four or five workshops a week wow. in sydney melbourne brisbane uh we're based up in byron now so i'd fly out of bell airport and uh on a monday morning and come back on a friday afternoon a lot of the time um, and whilst I loved it, I think I was a bit of a, a frog in the pot and uh, didn't realize how hectic it was. So I'm going to I'm going to put that as one side. And then this, the other side was that I started to learn more about good habits. And I was like, hang on, this is actually a really cool company. So from a from a cultural point of view, the the, the way that they came across the people that I met and spoke to, as, as Eric slowly convinced me to talk to more and more people. <laughs> Um, I was like, hang on, this 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 company has the same values I have. Um, you know, I spent I spent an hour on the phone with the CEO Martin, and he's a pretty busy guy. I was I was pretty you know thankful that I was able to get an hour with him. Um, and the entire time, all we spoke about was sailing and surfing. And oh, wow. I was like, this is my kind of company. This is, this is the role for me. <laughs> But obviously at the heart of it is this, this passion for learning, you know, and so um, I really tied into that and I started thinking about, you know, how do I make as big an impact as I can? Uh, and there's only so many workshops that I can run and so many workshops I can uh, fly around for. Um, but this uh, had the opportunity to really um, scale um, that passion of mine for and that love of learning and helping people grow and develop and create amazing teams and and yeah. relationships and all of that. So, um, so it had a lot of that for me, and I, I think that was the that was the real key motivator that really tipped me over the line. And I and I'll tell you, I, I had a, a I have a very supportive wife, Susie. She's <laughs> she's amazing. She stands by me. She wow. and the whole time I was making this decision, she she was saying to me, Cam. Whatever you decide, I don't mind. You know, if you want to stay with Elevate, then stay with Elevate. You know, if you want to take the the good habits role, then take the good habits role. Amazing. And I was like, okay, great. Anyway, one day I came home, and I said to Suze, I said, I've, I've made the decision. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the good habits role. Wow. And she went, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I guess she. She could see better than I could. But yeah, <laughs> where I, I was love at. it. So, That's awesome. Um, so it's been great. It's been a great transition. So you know, part of it was uh, so it was definitely some push. I eight time eight years was longer than I'd done yeah. most things for in my life. Um, and uh, I think I was I was ready for the change. And then the opportunity really presented itself to me. Um, so. Thank you, universe. <laughs> oh, well, that's an incredible story. I just love hearing that. You know, it all started in Bali. Just incredible yeah. <laughs> how things come about. Synchronicity in its play. It does. It does. Yeah, it's in yeah. those some of those things that we sometimes think are frivolous, you know, yeah. but they're actually they're the real opportunities, and well you only get one go. You only get one go at this at this life. So, <laughs> yeah, well done. Right? Well uh, done. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, and obviously, good habits is. Would you say it's one of the biggest online learning um platforms in europe or in the world or yeah. 
No, so uh, we're, we're we're probably up there in terms of the fastest growing in Europe. Uh, so we have had a lot of investment recently and uh, a lot of development into the business. So uh, we in we have been around for ten years, so we're well established. Um, the founders uh, came from a another learning business, and they used to make bespoke online learning for. Um, uh, for organizations and it would normally be that they'd go and create a you know online leadership program or maybe something around certain hard skills or technical or um uh, you know coding or whatever it was and they would go and make these programs but they would generally be for maybe 15 to 20 percent of that organization right and it was a really successful company they sold it they made a lot of money out of it i think he went and did a lap of the world in his yacht wow. <laughs> and came back and said you know what i want to do something that's that's valuable to everyone you know, why should training just be for the, for the top 20% or for this proportion of the business? And so that's where Good Habits was born 10 years ago out of uh, out of the Netherlands in Eindhoven, which I didn't really know about Eindhoven until recently, but I've now been there and it's a great place. Nice. Um, and so, so they started 10 years ago. There was two or three of them. I think within three years, there was maybe 10. Um, so slow, but um, uh, purposeful growth um up until i'm going to say maybe four years ago now they were only in the netherlands they then started they got their first round of private equity funding at that stage and and um uh grew into germany italy spain um uh, a couple other countries and then got a further round and a much bigger round of investment from a different private equity firm in uh, about 18 months ago and decided to scale globally and invest heavily in the product and creating something really outstanding. And so we've gone from 18 months ago, we had 150 people. We're now uh, about 500 people. Uh, we've gone from five countries to 15 countries now, uh, three of them outside of Europe. Uh, so very fast growing, um, but that also has that real anchor in um, in in learning and um, uh, and a really proven model that they've that they've managed to um, grow over the last decade. Awesome, and I'm assuming then that you would have had to translate a lot of the content into different languages. Yes, I mean, I my my third grade Dutch came in very <laughs> handy. <laughs> So we actually, it's one of it's one of the cool things about the product is all the programs, all the courses that we have, we create ourselves. Wow. Um, so every piece of content, we have full control over it, which means we get to manage the learning styles. It means we get to manage the look and the feel and the branding of it so that, you know, it feels familiar when a learner comes on. They know what they're going to get. So with Australia, we, we've launched with all Australian content. We've got a great presenter um, named Genevieve. She's lovely. She presents all of the all of the all of the courses. Um, there's Australian stories that are weaved through all of the programs. So you'll hear stories from Kieran Perkins and um, you know the Wallabies and oh, great. Different, different Australian based stories. Um, so yeah, so everything's really focused. We it, users do get access to the whole library, so you can start with the Australian content, and then there's British content. If you've got people who who are Spanish speaking, then they can look at the the Spanish or the um, uh, Argentinian uh, ah, site that we have. Nice. Uh, if they're Portuguese speaking, they can look at Brazil or Portugal. Yep. So uh, wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and um, and we're just actually about to launch our. Uh, Indian uh, library and our Mandarin Chinese library. So wow, exciting. Times. Wow, busy, busy mm. team over there. Absolutely. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's very great, actually. And the the effort and the resources that go into creating it. I, I like to say uh, that we're a production house that's run by LND nerds. You know, <laughs> we've got we've got instructional designers, we've got video editors, we've got um, you know, we've got graphic designers, we've got storytellers, copywriters, all those sorts of things all in-house. Basically, an entire floor of the building is dedicated to that. Um, we've got eight studios that we do for, we, we don't only do video, but we do do a lot of video. Um, so a huge amount of investment that goes into that. But really, at the heart of it is is people who understand learning and know learning. So 
um yeah, it's been it's been very interesting to be part of it and to see and, and to help kind of bring it to, to us well sounds like it absolutely mm. i mean and i'd love to kind of dig a little bit into your your journey in a way and kind of pitch these two things together i mean where do you find advantages and disadvantages of both traditional training and online learning mm. And what mm. have you learned over the last so many years that you're going to now take into this new role? Let me start with like, I guess, just talking about learning really, because, you know, we're always learning, aren't we? You know, there's every time we do a task, we probably get a little bit better at it. You know, every time we have a conversation with somebody, we learn something about that person or we learn about the way that we communicate or how to be funnier or come across smarter or whatever it is that we're trying to achieve, you know? So we're always learning, you know, the, the, the key to, to, I think to real growth is to recognize that learning is everywhere to seek out the best quality advice, feedback, content, um, you know, mentors, coaches, all that sort of thing, as much as we possibly can. And so, my response is that there is no right or wrong. There is no, there's definitely no one solution. You know, think about you know, you, uh, anyone's perspective, you know, anyone's perspective is made up from their experience. Nice. It's the, everything that's happened to them in their life. They, they were born, they had parents, you know, they were the biggest influence initially. They had some teachers, they had their, their peer groups, they had their jobs that they had, their bosses that they had, their co-workers, the yeah, yeah. times they got fired, the times they got promoted, all these different things, you know. And so it's coming at us from everywhere. And so there's no way there can be one solution. But I think the the, the key is, is to be conscious about seeking out the best quality that you can find. Nice. And whether that's I want to work for the best you know, manager that I can find or the best coach that I can find or... Um, you know, if I'm going to do online, if I want to do online learning, am I just going to YouTube and trying to search for whatever I can? Or, um, you know, am I looking for really high quality content or from, you know, people who who really have done this that I trust and that I know? Um, and so I think, and I will, I know, actually, there is room for face-to-face learning, for online learning. There's learning on the job um there's learning from your manager there's learning from your co-workers um and all of this is proven in in textbooks as well you know that we talk about the 10 20 70 which is you know 10 percent tends to start with that theoretical type thing 20 is the expanding on that and talking about it and, and trying to integrate it and then the other 70 is generally the stuff that you're doing day to day that's where a huge part of it comes from so um, in terms of the second part of that question, like where, what are the limitations or what are the advantages of, of certain areas? You know, definitely the ability to scale um, learning with online is yeah. a huge uh, benefit. The ability to be able to do it anywhere at any time. Um, you know, we don't have to be in a classroom. We don't have to fly everyone from all around the country into Melbourne or into, into Brisbane. Yeah. We can, um, anyone can do it, uh, you know, while they're on the bus or on the loo, uh, <laughs> wherever, wherever they fancy. <laughs> um, so there's some advantages there, obviously. And again, you know, there's advantages to classroom training. I love being in front of, uh, being in a room with people and being able to talk and spitball ideas. We're seeing a lot more of that come to life in online learning as well now. Big part of big part of the differentiator that I that I this is one of the key things that I really liked when I was deciding if this was going to be the company I wanted to work for. We do these uh, we do these things called workouts. So every every course that we build comes with a workout, and a workout is essentially a piece of a a four sheet of paper, and anyone can pick up that a four sheet of paper and turn an online learning course into a face to face workshop. Wow. Okay. Great. So it's really cool. So you know, you could be you could be a brand new manager, or you could assign the manager could assign it to somebody in the team and say, okay, we're going to do a course on difficult conversations. We're going to use the workout for it. Nice. If that person gets up, 
they'll read out a few questions that might say, you know, okay, what's the time that you've had a difficult conversation? You know, what's the time that went badly? You know, share that with the group and it gets everybody interacting, thinking about it. You'll then go away. You'll do a couple of, uh, watch a video and do a quiz and read a magazine type thing about, uh, online magazine that is about uh, about having difficult conversations then you come back and you there's a couple of dot points for you know the next stage and so it actually enables this hybrid uh, model where people can take the best of both worlds and uh, you know the extra advantage of um, being able to do it internally as well which is uh is definitely a, a oh, bonus and the cost i'm assuming like the cost is going to be much more effective than training face-to-face because -face, yeah. training face-to-face -face can be expensive yeah, certainly, certainly. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, from a scaling point of view, you can't really compare the two. Um, I don't like to compare the two that much. I'm still a big fan of face-to-face -face training, and I think that the value is there for face-to-face -face training, um, especially when it's done well by by good organisations, by good facilitators with with a good depth of knowledge and experience that they can share. Um but you, yeah, I mean, you can't really compare, um, you know, the the price of um, rolling out a, uh, a a series of workshops to a company of a thousand people, um, you know, to to getting online training for them all, um, you know, it's almost unaffordable completely for for the for those bigger jobs. So, Love yeah, it. and yeah, there's there's, a, there's the price and value yeah, uh, situation there. But what mm. I'm getting out of this is really it's not a, it's not one or the other; it's both. It's and. Yeah, it's, it's and learning, it's and everything learning. and everything else yep. as well, Darren. You know, like there's if we think about learning as being the time that we're in training, <laughs> then I think we're missing a huge part of it. You know, yeah, like point. What, one of the things that I I love talking about with leaders is that there are I don't know. You know, I'm making up numbers here, but there are probably 50 or 60 or 100 opportunities that you have in a day. If you manage a team, you probably have 50 to 100 opportunities in a day to coach people. Yep. You know, every time someone comes up to you and says, hey, Darren, how do I do this? You know, you get you get a choice. You get to say, okay, well, I'm just going to tell this person how to do it, um, you know, and hopefully they go away and do it. Or I can use this as a coaching moment. You know, I can use this as an opportunity to grow them and maybe I'll ask them some questions, you know, maybe think, ask them, hey, okay, so tell me what you're trying to achieve here, you know, to where, where are you at right now with it? Like, what would you do if I wasn't here? Maybe, you know, what do you think you should do? Hi, guys, just a quick message. I'm always on the lookout for engineers in the managed services space across Australia, support engineers, systems engineers, network engineers, and solution consultants. I only work with the best companies that are going places, really value their staff, have great techs and offer stacks of training and other benefits, up to $1,000 for successful referrals. Who do you know? Feel free to give me a buzz, 0414 659 800. But right now, back to the conversation. Yeah. That's, that's, that's growing people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's, that's getting them to engage their brains and to start thinking for themselves about, okay, you know, um, I want to I want to come up with this solution, and if we're doing those sorts of things, you know, we're we're not only helping people to learn and grow, we're actually helping people to teach themselves and helping people to understand how to problem solve. You know, it's uh, it's got it's so many. Yeah. It is, it is, and so I, I mean, I love I love working with organisations that see all that. Yeah, that's 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 the bottom line for me if i see organizations and they're like we need an online option we need some face-to-face -face training we need to make sure that our leaders our managers and in fact all of our people have the ability to be able to see opportunities to help other people grow yeah and they take that by the horns that's a culture that's a that's a culture of of growth it is. You know? it's, it's a real mindset of um, of growth and learning and i know that you're big on feedback as well and we spoke about this when we had our last podcast is yeah. asking for feedback. You know, that's another yeah. example of how you can really grow. Just have yeah. to ask. And it's also about control. It's actually that taking control of your own growth as yeah. well. You know, if you sit and wait for people to give you feedback, then, you know, you're not in control of that growth. That's you right. know, so take control of it, ask for feedback, you know, how, what, how would you do this better? If you're in, you know, I just had this situation, this is what occurred. 
if you were in my boots, what would you have done? Like, how do you think we could have got a better outcome from that? Yeah, yeah. So important. Um, beautiful. And just out of interest, did did you see a, a huge um, spurt in online learning during COVID? Was that, was that a bit of a catalyst, that whole period? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it it shifted the industry dramatically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it also swung back the other way. Okay. Um, post COVID, and now I think it's kind of doing that pen. You know, the, uh, what's the word for it? The metronome thing. You know, yeah, it's yeah, exactly right. finding It'll, pendulum. Finding its thing, equilibrium. You know? Yeah. That's right. It's finding its equilibrium, and um, you know, we don't need to go down that whole talk of you know teleconferencing and all that sort of thing and the way it's yeah, changed yeah. work forever. But that's you know, there's there's truth in all of that. Yeah. And I think now we're seeing that people can learn while they're on the bus, they can learn from home, they, you know, in work hours or outside of work hours, um, you know, especially if you can make learning intrinsically motivating for that person, yep. you know, you need, you need the best content if you want, people to put aside netflix <laughs> yeah, that's right there's a lot of choice yeah. these days seriously like there's there's <laughs> the, we, we are we don't it, at, at good habits we don't see ourselves as competing against other online learning companies yep. we're competing for attention with the likes uh-huh. of netflix and um you know prime and all the other things Absolutely. that are out there it's all you're competing it's, against any other screen it's screen yeah. time yep 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 Incredible. Yeah, so that's why you know we put so much effort and so much um, importance on the quality of that content and and storytelling. You know, we we have great we have some of the master classes that we've created are literally. I mean, if if it was if it was made by Netflix, you would go, yep, yeah, that doesn't surprise me one little wow. bit. You know, they're really top top notch. So, but that's that's what we're competing against. Where it's that you know, that attention economy that we're, <laughs> that we're, that we're in, where um, if we're going to be successful, like I can go and sell an online learning platform to somebody, but if no one uses it, or if nobody, uh, you know, if the, if not only if people don't use it, but if it doesn't actually lead to impactful change, then we're not going to get signed up next year. Yep. So we focus a lot on that. In fact, with all the investment that we got, the majority went into the building of of programs and the technology that's needed in order to be able to deliver it to the market in the best possible way. Beautiful. Love it. And it's so important. I mean, you know, these days everybody is valuing training and learning and development so much more than ever before. And I know that if I put my recruiter hat on, you know, we're in a very candidate short market and one Mm. of the massive carrots or good quality candidates to come to companies and also good quality candidates to stay in companies is that they're going to be trained and nurtured and really grown. And, you know, it's so important that we put emphasis on this. And so where do you see online learning fitting into all that? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've just, uh, I've actually just come from the HR tech fest summit in Sydney and Pretty sure that's all anyone spoke about for the last two days, <laughs> you know, which just where is the talent and when we find them, <laughs> how do we retain them, you know, and and what people want is different now, you know, and I think we're seeing different people in, in within the same organisations with different opinions as well. I mean, we look at work from home as an example, you know, You've got you've got some people that are just so on this side of no everybody should be able to either work from home or choose what they want to do or a hybrid, and then you've got other other people in the same organisations that are saying no 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 come on everyone you've had your fun come back in. Yeah. Um, I think it's crazy. I mean, like, you know, certainly for us, you know, we we've got a very flexible arrangement. I've got um, two of my staff are based up here in Byron Bay with me. Um, we, uh, you know, we all work really hard, but if somebody needs to stay at home and they want to work from home for the day, then fantastic. If someone needs to pick their kids up at three o'clock, but then they're going to, you know, work later on or, you know, I I don't really care. I just care about the fact that we're having a good time, that we're getting results, that, um, we're able to give people a life that they're happy about, you know, that's, that's what it should be. I know I'm a little bit off topic because you asked me what does online learning have to do with this. But no, I mean it's all. I do talking feel a bit passionate about that side. Um, 
but you know, I, I think it helps to facilitate a lot of that. Yeah. You know, it, it if we look at it from what's important to people now, you know, the uh, Gen Ys, Gen Zs, yeah. you know, if you look at what what people are valuing in terms of what they want from um, working in organisations. It used to be about you know salary and uh, your title. You know, they used to be the things that was people deemed as really important and it's not anymore. No. I saw a graph actually in the last two days and it was broken up with, you know, <clears throat> it had it still had salary, it still had title, but they were like, instead of being 50%, 50%, it was like 10% was, you know, what title am I, have I got? And 10% was how much salary am I making? The rest was yep. flexibility, growth or learning. Yep. Um uh, it was, you know, both of which online learning come into play with. Um, uh, it was the relationships that I can create. Uh, you know, culture, there was management. Culture, absolutely. That's culture, cool. management. Yep. Yep. All of those things. So, um, so we, you know, we, we, we definitely touch on a lot of those areas. I think especially that flexibility component and especially obviously the, the obvious one is that providing that growth, you know, if, do you want to work for an organisation that supports growth or not, you know? And actually I heard a, heard a really interesting, um, somebody put this, this question to me the other day and it really challenged me because I, we work for a learning organisation. I think that we really support learning uh, in our organization we obviously preach it to all of our customers suppliers everybody else and this person they work in my organization they said so cam in a dutch accent i'm not going to do the dutch <laughs> accent <laughs> save everyone that said uh cam how, how do you feel if you're you know you're managing a sales team for example and then you walk over and you see one of your staff and they're sitting there uh, watching a TED talk at, at 11 o'clock. And I was like, oh. Like, <laughs> Interesting. I, I think you got me a little bit there. Yeah. Like my initial, my initial response is probably, what's that person watching a TED talk for? <laughs> you know? yeah. And I kind of pulled myself back and I would probably, and I like to think at least in real life, that I would probably sit back and go, okay, that's kind of educational. It's you know, they're taking an interest in their own growth and development. It's, yeah. to, it's definitely <laughs> entertainment as well, you know, but, but hey, like that's really close to what we preach. And so for me, it's, it's actually about organisations giving permission for their people to learn, yeah. you know, it's actually, and that, and that's a, that's not just a CEO. That's not definitely not the LND manager. They're giving everyone permission to learn. But that's that's every line manager, yeah, every, that's the every whole culture manager. of the company, the whole culture of that's, the organization. Absolutely, you know, all the way through it. Yep. So that challenged me. I was like, wow, yeah, that you know, because I, I say stuff. <laughs> that was a real yeah, yeah I, I that, can imagine, you know, absolutely. Mm, and I suppose you mm, have to look at everything on a case by case basis. If that's all this yep. person was doing, if they spent the whole week <laughs> watching TED Talks, then you'd start to bring them into your office. <laughs> but if they were very successful and they just that's started right. to, and they were yeah. just watching some TED Talks or self-development, fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. So. Yes. If it was a if it was a whole day on TED, then <laughs> <laughs> and there'd be something going on. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Um, fantastic. And I mean, in terms of your background, what what would you bring now? from running a business into working as the Australian face of good habits? Mm, it definitely changes you yeah. running your own business. And in fact, it was it was the reason I was recruited. And almost all of the country directors around the world at Good Habits have experience in entrepreneurialism. Right. They almost all have some, at some stage, run their own business and right. they specifically look for those people because they want each country to have its own flavour, to have its own culture, to have its own, um, you know, ways of growing the business. And uh, and so they do specifically look for that. Um, I'm going to answer this a couple of different ways. I mean, there's some obvious advantages, you know, the, of having run your own business that, you, you definitely tend to be more careful with the way that you make decisions. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, there's, um, 
you know, you, you worry about your costs or you think about your costs quite quite heavily as if it was your yes. own. Yep. Um, you you um, you need to be creative. You know, you can't you you can't just you know do the basics. You've got to look for opportunities. You've got to think outside the box. Yep. You've got to you know have that that uh, that that pocket knife with all the different tools yep. to be able to get you out of trouble or get you into something amazing. So I think there's all of that, but you know, then there's another part, and this is getting more on the personal side. Is I also actually think I need to let go of some of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that, um, I you know I I get so passionate about business, and I get so passionate about the the role that I'm in, or the the organization that I'm running, or or the impact that I have on my clients or, you know, the relationships that I develop, all that sort of thing. And I actually think like, as I'm getting a little bit older, um, (laughs) you know, let's not, let's not talk about age, but um, (laughs) she also thinking that, that part of it is almost counterproductive. You know, I actually think I need to let go of it a little bit more. So part of the work that I'm trying to do in my own personal development at the moment is actually letting go of a little bit of that as well and not taking much responsibility and, uh, you know, not feeling like... It's a classic example of a a leader who feels like they have to do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And certainly when you're an entrepreneur and especially if you've only got a few staff, like the buck stops with you, you know, whether or not your kids eat depends on how successful you are. You know, so I think there's also a little bit of a journey for me there, and that's my, you know, maybe maybe I'm do, maybe I do this for six or seven years or however long I'm in this this stage or this role for. Maybe it's longer. Who knows? Um, but I think that's probably the the thing that I'm supposed to learn at the moment. So yeah, I hear you loud and clear. I mean, when you're running a small business, you know, I'm just a one man show. I do oh, everything well, uh, just about. I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Crazy yeah. hours. Yeah. multitasking you're doing, multi-skilling you're doing, you're doing the sourcing the business yep. development the podcasting yep. the the cleaning the taxes yep. the, the content <laughs> the uh, the admin sending invoices chasing money it just doesn't end <laughs> yeah, yeah it's crazy IT. <laughs> crazy crazy stuff Love it. so cam tell us more about good habits and you know what kind of uh, programs what kind of modules yep. you guys provide love yep. to hear more about it yeah, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, so look, we, we predominantly focus on on really on the personal development skills or, you know, the the human skills, you know, what we used to call soft skills. Yeah. Um, we, we because this goes back to what I was talking about earlier with the founders when they said, okay, we actually want to produce something that is relevant for everyone, right. you know. So what are the kinds of programs that, that we can um, you know, give to the world to be able to help everybody upskill. And so um, we have a pretty, pretty broad sort of selection of those. So in fact, you can see on, on the walls behind me, um, sorry if you're listening, but you know, we've got a range of all our different courses. We've got everything from time management to, um, you know, conversation techniques, nifty negotiation, uh, influencing, brainstorming, the power of failure, take the lead, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge range of content that, and, and even our leadership content is delivered in a way that it's not necessarily for managers. You know, obviously it, it is for managers, it is for leaders in business, but, it, but you know, we believe that anybody should be able to pick up this course and it's delivered in a way that is easy to understand, easy to, it resonates, you know, it, it actually tells a great story um, and therefore enables people to be able to grow and develop. You know, that's that's our goal. We want to work with organisations that care about their people, that care about them growing, growing with the organisation. You know, we're talking about the problems of not being able to find staff, well, let's not have to find as many staff because they're staying with us yep. and we're growing them and developing them. So um, so we, we tend to focus on, on, on those sorts of skills. We do do some digital um, skills as well. So things like Excel and uh, you know, basically all the office suites. So um, we're doing that. We're about to launch some Google programs as well. Um, 
Oh, great. Uh, but they tend to be a bit more user friendly, we find. So that we focused on Office first. Um, we do a little bit of uh, language in there as well. So, you know, business English, for example. So if you, people have got workforces with a with a um a uh, lot of English as a second language, then um, there's there's that business language uh, kind of um, capability in there as well. Um, so that that's sort of the the programs, the the style of learning. You know, I've touched on how we make that hybrid model, but I think you know a big thing for us as well is that we really recognise that everybody learns differently. Yeah. You know, what the one way that you consume information darren will be different perhaps to the way that i consume information 100 uh, percent, definitely you know and so saying to everybody okay here's a series of videos go and watch the videos like you might retain more of that than me maybe it's maybe it's the other way around how do we know you know we all have different ways of, of absorbing information so we actually have we have 25 different learning styles for wow. way that we communicate information and and all of our um, all of our courses are set up the same way. So there's an introduction to the course, kind of a why should you do it type thing? What are you going to get out of it? Yep. And then we have three key takeaways, three learning objectives that someone can walk away with. And with each learning objectives, there might be half a dozen ways to learn about it. So you can choose to watch a documentary that we've made, or you can choose to watch a little three-minute cartoon that nice. brings to life you know, and it's hosted by a comedian or, um, uh, you know, so we've got that. We've got uh, somebody else might prefer to learn by doing a quiz style thing or a test type style thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got magazine, online magazine style learning. If you, if you want to read a story about how this happened or so we believe that if we really want to make it accessible to everybody, then we need to create learning styles that are right for everybody. And you don't get, it's not a test, you know, you're not, you don't get to the end and you've, you've passed or you haven't passed. It's about actually giving something to somebody where they walk away at the end and go, actually, I'm going to use this. <laughs> That's awesome. and, 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 it, and it actually works. So this was um, in my, I won't go into the details of it, but I got given a demo account when I was, when I was, uh, talking about taking the role and I went and did a course called out of the box yeah, okay. and it was about, it was about out of the box style thinking, you know, and, um, uh, and I was in the negotiation for my, uh, for my package and <laughs> I, uh, actually this is an out of the box moment. I need to actually shift the way that I'm thinking about this negotiation. I actually brought something else in and I would not have, literally I would not have done it. Yeah, if awesome. I hadn't have watched that course, um, you know, a, a few days before or a week before. So um, it actually works. You know? yeah, right. and you, you're never going to walk away with, you're not going to like be completely new. You're not going to do a two hour online course and go, Oh my God, I'm CEO now let's go. You know, but it's, it's those nuggets and so providing different ways for people to find those nuggets as easily for them i think is 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 really at the heart of it beautiful and i mean i can imagine that once you're um, set up you can revisit those programs as many times as you like that's right yeah so access to all so it's a huge thing for us we do not sell just to a select few people you can't just come and buy if you've got an organization with a thousand people we don't just sell you you know 50 licenses for your leadership team it's at the core of everything that we do nice. so when somebody's when a company signs up every employee gets access it's one price um it they get uh access to the content they can redo courses um you know there's all the access to all of the um, you know, the workouts, which I mentioned, uh, we've got, all, we've got a promo studio, which can be used to be able to help with adoption of learning. So the, the, the lead of the project or the LND manager, whoever's managing the, uh, the rollout has all of these tools to be able to engage people, to get them excited about it. Um, it's really, it's a great suite. Mm. Wow. That sounds amazing. And I mean, I love that mm. it's a lot of, it's very focused on the softer side of things in terms of softer skills versus hard skills. Yeah. Because yeah, well, you know, that's it, where it, the it, gaps it, are these days. I mean, look at where the world is going. You know? <laughs> um, look at how many jobs are getting automated. Uh, you know, the, 
the the areas where we still add value as humans yeah. are the human skills. Absolutely. Yeah, more, and we're <laughs> and all realizing it's... that more and more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and the more that the more that we continue to take the other stuff away, yeah, then the more hopefully we can be creative, that we can be, you know, all think outside the box yeah. or look at new directions and new strategies and um, build better relationships, all those sorts of things. Yeah. So and I suppose the more that we're becoming aware of this need, the more we mm -hmm. realize we have to invest in ourselves yeah. to upskill. And so these this kind of programs are fantastic. Yeah. And, and I think Australia is a is a is a really mature market with it, actually. I think that, you know, we it's recognized well here yeah. that you need to invest in these types of skills in order to have high functioning people in high functioning teams that produce great work, you know. So even if you're just looking at it from an economic point of view, if you have no social responsibility or anything like that. Um, you know, even just from a bottom line point of view, the return on the investment is is a no-brainer nowadays. In fact, there was a study done recently by I'm gonna say it was KPMG. No, it was Deloitte. A study done by Deloitte recently, and it said that for every one dollar of investment that goes into learning and development, you get four dollars in return. Wow, I think I heard that somewhere along the lines. Yep. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yep. Might have been one of my posts. <laughs> <laughs> could have been. I think I saw that. Yeah, could have been. Without a doubt. I mean, it's so important. And I think, you know, we're all, and again, all these things will also have knock-on effects in our personal lives as well. It's not just for work. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at a skill, skill like active listening, yep. you know, and I, I, if you think about, active listening as just being a skill for salespeople or for managers, you know, listening to their staff better or, I mean, like the most important people in our lives are the ones that deserve our real attention. Definitely. And um, so I hope, and actually we, I hear heaps of stories. So, you know, obviously we've only just launched in Australia, um, but I hear stories from, um, because we give this access to anyone and we really make it, very easily accessible. So if you want, if you if you if you sign up and your your company signs you up and you want your husband to go and do the course or you want your, your girlfriend to go and do the course, they can just log on and do it basically. Right. I hear all these stories about people who um the impact that it's had on families, not just, you know, in the business. It's really oh, nice. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, it's just, you know, more and more important every day. Yeah. 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 And especially when when work and family is becoming more and more entwined, you know, That's right. if we're working from home, you know, right, the kids are off school there, you know, there's um, the dynamics have all changed. Yeah. So that, you know, it, it hopefully there's benefit that comes with, comes with all of that. Yeah. We're working from home more, we're working more hours. It's hard to know which hat to put on. Like we don't put on any hats anymore. We're just one big blend of everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I hope we can find some some <laughs> definition for it sometimes as well. You know, I I I I like I definitely think that I can improve on my capacity oh, to be, be present in in certain moments, you know. Like you. there are times where I'm really good at it. And I'm like, and I give myself a pat on the back when I am, you know, I'm like dadding, dadding really well, you know. <laughs> that was great dadding, Cam. And then there are other times where I'm like, I was just on my phone for half an hour while my daughter was in the room. What am I doing? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. Uh, yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. yeah. Well then. Is there a course, one of the courses that are on work life balance is. or anything like that? Yes. There absolutely is. There you go. Love yeah, it. We have a we have a specific course on working from home. Love we it. also have another course called Kicking Social Media. Oh, so, okay. uh, <laughs> so we have to do, you know. So definitely, you know, we we uh, practice what we preach, or we uh, we we sort of provide that opportunity as well. Great, love it. Well, Cam, really appreciate you coming on the show. I thoroughly enjoyed that. You know, we Me could too, talk Darren. for hours. But yeah, how can people that. find out about you guys, and if they want to start working with good habits? And you know, what do yep. they do? Uh, so our website went live um, a week ago. <laughs> so goodhabits.com. And that's with a Z, 
uh, good habits because we're zany. Um, <laughs> but, <you know? laughs> Crazy. Um, goodhabits.com be the best place. Uh, maybe we could pop my details into some show notes or something as well. Sure, sure, absolutely. And, uh, pop your LinkedIn uh, profile as well and I'll pop your email address if you like or whatever you whatever. Yeah. Terrific. All right. Yeah, that's the best way. Um, but if you go online, um, anyone's welcome to get a demo as well. So we do a two week free trial. Okay. Um, so if anyone out there is in HR or LND, or if you want, just if you're interested for yourself, um, feel free to reach out and we can organize that for you. No problem. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to check it out. It sounds fantastic. And, you know, you know, with you at the helm, I, you know, it only inspires me more. We'll have fun anyway, either way, Darren. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, I really appreciate it. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with? No, mate, just thank you to you. Love love chatting with you. I really do every time, whether it's on a podcast or uh, or offline. So oh. um, thanks again for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Definitely check out Good Habits with a Z, and I'll put all the links in the show notes for you. Sounds like some fantastic content, some fantastic programs. They're going to help everybody in their life, work and home as well. So everybody see you very, very soon for another episode of Soul Searching, the Soul Recruitment Podcast. Thanks again for joining me for another episode of Soul Searching, the Soul Recruitment Podcast. If you'd like to join me as a guest on the show, I would be delighted to collaborate. Feel free to buzz me on 0414 659 800 or email me on darren at soulrecruitment.com.au. I'm always on the lookout for great guests who can share their stories and expertise with my community. But for now, though, have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.